and it will change in the sense that from this point forward, you are going to be asked to reduce fractions. Uh, and that's based on this. Uh, and I think we've talked about this before. If, if you ate, you know, if they take a pizza and they slice it into 12 slices, and you ate six of them, everybody's pretty much figured out that if you ate six out of 12 pieces, you ate half of the pizza. And in math, because with any fraction, there are an infinite, going on forever, number of fractions that mean the same thing. We always want to go down to the smallest. It doesn't mean different, but it uses the smallest numbers. Uh, to the thing that's what we call reduced to lowest terms. Okay, In math, we always go down to a fraction that's reduced to its lowest term because it's the easiest to understand. Eating, if you tell somebody you ate half a pizza, that's by far better than you telling them you ate 20 out of 40, 20 fortieths or 50 hundredths or, you know, 11, 20 seconds of a pizza or whatever it is. It's also called simplifying. If you ever hear the word simplifying math, that means make it as easy to understand as possible. Now the question is, half is easy because it's something we deal with a lot, but what if you see something like this, 14 over 16? 14 over 16 is a fraction that can be reduced. How do I know that? And here is what you need to do. Um, you need to think of common factors. And I'll, I'll write it out like the long way. You don't have to do this for all the problems, but this is what you think about. If you think about 14, and you think about 16, and you think about what factors they have. 14 has 1, 2, 7, and 14 as factors. Those are numbers that go into 14. 16 has 1, 2, what, uh, 4, 8, and 16. You need to look at all the factors there and see which one of them which one of them do they have in common? And if you look at this one, which one do they have in common? They and both ones. have a 2. You don't want to worry about 1s because 1s are... In all of them. Yeah, because 1 is everything there. Can I borrow your pencil there, sir? There you go. I was told that you can use this next week. I can use My it. My hat that I was wearing today. Next. Oh. This little pencil that would be perfect for you. Sure, I'm sure it is. <laughs> Okay, so if you see 2 as a common factor, what you do is you divide both and the top and the bottom by 2, because dividing by 2 over 2 is the same as dividing by 1, which doesn't change something, but we get new numbers. 14 divided by 2 is 7, and 16 divided by 2 is 8. 7 eighths is the same fraction as 14 sixteenths, just in its reduced and simplest forms. Okay, so you're always going to look for what we call those common factors. Um, another example would be um, 6 eighths. We'll give you easy ones to start off with. What number goes into both 6 and 8? That's pretty easy because they're both even, Bryce. 2. 2. And I want to see this when you do this. Write down your dividing by things. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 8 divided by 2 is 4. So unfortunately for you children, from this time forward, anytime you can reduce a fraction, you are going to need to. And it will be wrong if you don't. So you've got to always be on the, the watch for that. For example, here's a, here's a problem right out of the book. Uh, 5 and 5, 6 minus 4 and 1, 6. And everybody knows your first step to doing this is to write it up and down. If you do 5 and 5 6 and subtract 4 and 1 6 from it, what is 1 6 from 5 6 is 4 6, and 1 from 4, or 4 from 5 is 1. 
If you wrote that as your answer, it's going to be wrong because the fraction 4 sixth can be reduced. And then you got some kind of, hmm, what number goes in the 4 sixth? Wait, 2. And if I divide them both by 2, cut them both in half, I end up with 2 thirds. And you still have the whole number 1 in front, 1 and 2 thirds. It has to be reduced to its lowest terms. And I think that's probably going to be, you know, 2 and 6 ninths reduces to what? What number goes into 6 and 9? Three. 3. So if you divide them both by 3, you end up with 2 thirds again. So this would be 2 and 2 thirds. You always need to check to see if you can reduce. So that is step number 1.